Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and we did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What an extraordinary question. When was it that we saw you and we did not take care of you? Jesus has been telling several parables up to this point in Matthew's gospel. He's given the parable of the faithful and the unfaithful servants, the parable of the ten bridesmaids, and the parable of the master's talents. Each of these stories tell us about the importance of being faithful to Jesus by using the gifts and opportunities God gives us to do good and to not be selfish or rely on our status or reputation. And now Jesus tells one final parable about the end times when he comes back to earth. Jesus says he will take the church and separate it between those who were faithful to his teachings from those who were not, sheep from goats. To those on his right, the sheep, he says, come, you're blessed. You did what I taught you. You cared for people who were vulnerable, people that were in the hospital, who were homeless, people who were refugees, and people who were incarcerated. And even though you didn't see me, I was present in each one of those people you served. 
When you saw that person, you were seeing me. When you fed that person, you were feeding me. Whenever you did that, you were being my followers. And the people on his right are confused and they say, Jesus, we don't remember seeing you there. We saw a homeless person on the street or we saw a sick person in the hospital or we saw someone in prison, but we don't remember seeing you there. That's what it means to be disciples of Jesus. It means being a people who care for the least of these, to serve those who have been cast out by society. Because each time we serve someone, we know that we serve Jesus himself. Then he turns to those on his left, the goats, and says, depart from me. You did not do what I asked of you. You lived selfishly. You did not care for the vulnerable. You said you were being my followers, but you were lying to yourselves. You were so caught up and the lie you were telling yourselves that you didn't even realize how far from the truth you would come. Go away from me. But the people on his left are also confused, or at least they seem confused. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and we did not take care of you. What's interesting is the word the people say and when they say we did not take care of you is very specific. It's the same word for a deacon, someone who's set aside by God to minister to those who are on the margins. They could have said it even more specifically even they could have just said uh, when did we see you and we weren't being church it's a very interesting detail that's in in that verse what the text is saying is these aren't people who have never known jesus before these are christians followers of jesus but they are actively going away from God. They know God's commandments. They're not even people who maybe they, they um, are accidentally sinning uh, or doing bad. Or maybe, you know, they could have just done a little bit better and, uh, and God would, God's response would have been different. These are people who are actively sinning by disobeying God's command to minister to the needy. Jesus is saying that hospitality is a moral issue. It has to do with God's call of the church to be in the world and serving those who are in need. It's not just some add-on to the church. This is the church. It's not something that we have church and then serving the needy is a side gig or something. It's not icing on the cake. Jesus says it is the cake. This is what the church is, is to be a people who worship, but also worship God through being in the world. Jesus says that the church can do all the great things. She can preach the gospel, can have excellent worship, can have a well thought out theology. But if the church does not serve the people God has put right in front of her, none of it matters. That's the judgment Jesus gives to you and to me. Of the times we have not been faithful to his teachings. Every person here has not followed Jesus at some point. All of us has, have put ourselves over others at some point. 
Maybe we've turned away from someone who was hungry and looking right at us in the face. Or maybe we were too caught up in church fights or too concerned about where the numbers in the pew were or too focused on where the money would come to pay off the church bills. And what Jesus says to us is, that was me. That was me you turned away from. That's why the Bible talks about division and schism as a result of sin. Because sin's primary effect is to obscure the person and mission of Christ. That's why I think Paul means in 1 Corinthians when he asks rhetorically, is Christ divided? Christ is one. Christ is always servant love, putting others above himself and giving himself for others. And whenever Christians ask, well, did Jesus really mean that? Or when we question Jesus' authority to command us or to care for the least of these, we aren't just rejecting Christ's teachings. But in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, we're rejecting Jesus himself. This Sunday is Christ the King, the time in the church that we name that Jesus is the ruler of this world and not the nations. It's the most recent feast day in the church because it wasn't introduced until 1925 in the Roman Catholic Church. It was after World War I and right as fascists were gaining power in, in Europe. Benito Mussolini uh, had already come to power three years earlier in Italy. Adolf Hitler had already had a failed political coup in Germany where he was trying to overthrow the government. He had gone to prison where he wrote a very famous book at the time called Mein Kampf. And he had already been released from prison at this point, and he was quickly rising to power in Germany. This was a time the church was in great danger by the evil powers around her. And not long after Christ the King was first celebrated, Hitler became the leader of Germany. And World War II began, and millions of Christians publicly supported Hitler and served in Hitler's army. And they knowingly and willfully killed millions of men, women, and children in the Holocaust. I wonder how these Christians saw Jesus. I wonder if they saw Jesus as a powerful king who would come riding into the world in a very dramatic way. But what if Christ comes in the least expected way? What if Christ the king means the opposite of what we would naturally think? As a suffering king, who takes on the sin of the world to be wounded by the divisions of his body, but a king who is still speaking and who promises to be with us in our pain and to redeem us, to redeem our wounds, to heal our world, to take our broken places in our lives, and to make our world whole. And through the gift of one another and the gift of the needy, we proclaim the, the reign of Christ until he comes again. Here again, the words of the Lord. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family. You did it to me. Amen.